six is the first one. It's just a little bit different than um, anything we've seen before. I, I would not be uncomfortable putting something like that on the test because I want to see who can figure out something that's not an exact cookie cutter of something you've seen before. Um, but I think it's worth going over while you have me here. So the length of each edge of a cube is increasing at a uniform rate. So we have a cube, which I'll just call a side length x. And dx dt is obviously some number. They don't tell us, but the lengths are increasing at a uniform rate. At a certain point in time, the rate of change of the volume, so if I write my volume formula, which is x cubed, and differentiate that, so dv dt equals 3x squared dx dt, that rate of change of the volume is equal to the rate of change of the total surface area. So if I do a surface area formula, which is 6 sides times x squared each, the derivative of the surface area equals 12x dx dt. And at some moment, they're telling us that those rates of changes are equal. So we're going to set them equal to each other. So 3x squared dx dt has to equal 12x dx dt. And then we will solve for x because they say to determine the non-zero length of the edge <coughs> of the cube at that instant. So your dx dt's are going to cancel on both sides. You get 3x squared equals 12x, and we're just going to solve that. So if we get it equal to 0, factor out a 3x, We get that x equals 0, which that can't be the side length of a cube, otherwise your cube wouldn't exist, or x equals 4. Good? Yeah. So, a little bit different, definitely different. Never seen anything like that, but not hard by any means. Okay, and the other one is number 11. So 11 tells us that we have a point moving counterclockwise on the top half of the unit circle x squared plus y squared equals, let me just do this, equals 1. So I'm going to definitely sketch that. Here's my unit circle and I'm moving along just the top half of it. So I don't really think I need the bottom half. But this is 1, this is negative 1, this is 1 because it's the unit circle. So I'm moving counterclockwise. So I have some P point that's headed in this direction around. If the X coordinate of P is decreasing at a rate of 1 tenth of a unit per second, so the x-coordinate decreasing at a rate of one-tenth would give me a dx dt of negative one-tenth. They want to know at what rate is the y-coordinate changing. So dy dt equals question mark. Specifically when the point is at a standard position of pi over 6 radians, which is how many degrees, just so we can ballpark this. What's pi over 6 radians in degrees? 30. So I'm going to say that's where we want our point P to be at that moment. So if this is pi over 6, we should be able to come up with the coordinates of those points. Can we right now? I'm not sure because it's been a while. But when you're on the unit circle, your y coordinate is the sine of theta, right? What's the sine of pi over 6? One half. Your x coordinate is the cosine of theta. What's the cosine of pi over 6? Root 3 over 2. So I know you obviously 
clearly you, you know you remember some of you anyway those values. But just so you remember, any point on the unit circle is cosine theta comma sine theta. Okay. So that's how I got those two numbers. Now, the equation that we're dealing with is this equation for a circle, x squared plus y squared equals 1. So that's what I'm going to differentiate, 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt equals 0. And I'm just going to plug in everything that I know. My x-coordinate at this moment is root 3 over 2. My change in x is negative 1 tenth. My y coordinate is one half. My dy dt is what I'm looking for. So the two times a half is going to cancel. The two and the two over here are going to cancel. So I just have negative root three over ten, which I'm just going to add to the other side. I'm going to add root three over ten to both sides. And dy dt will equal root 3 over 10. Which should make sense. Isn't the y coordinate on the up and up? It's increasing, right? As you move this way, it's increasing. If we ever did an angle over here in the second quadrant, well now your y coordinate would probably be, your dy dt we would assume would be negative. Right? What should your dy dt be right at this moment? Zero. Zero, correct. Good. Zero. So we've done those like points moving along a curve, but that one had a little trig involved to come up with the actual x and y coordinate. Wanted you to remember that little feature. And so that's 6 and 11. Obviously the rest of your answers are there. Um, and in 13, I, could, I, would give this, I would consider giving this as a bonus, but I would give you this law of cosine. And I already drew the picture up accordingly and when I, you draw the picture you realize it's not a right triangle and so I don't have the Pythagorean theorem and when you don't have a right triangle you have to resort to the law of cosines or law of sines. So that could be like a bonus question but I would not put that on your test because we have no experience with the law of cosines. Mm -hmm.